Oh, that wonderful brew known as Finney's homebrew The people up yonder are trying it too But their feathers all ruffled and the halos askew Hallelujah, hallelujah, Finney's homebrew Oh, that wonderful brew Hello and happy homebrew Wednesday It's Finney here from Emporium Brewing uh, And first things first, a big shout out to Dino from... Uh, Tube Dinos, who did our new um, our new entry um, scene thing, blurb. Um, obviously, the old one had the homebrew shop um, saying, welcome to Homebrew Wednesday. So, um, yeah, thanks, Dino. Um, hopefully, I'll get you some more beer at some point and send it up. Um, so, on to this week's video. So, I actually deleted my initial entry <laughs> to, to this one, um, but I... What I've done is done a, um, a lambic style beer, um, which is basically a wild fermented ale. So you do all your mashing and then just leave it out overnight and whatever wild bacteria is around um, will fall into the beer. And then you put that strain into a fermenter and then just let you know nature take its course. So it's a long video, so maybe get some snacks ready. Um, and without further ado, here is my um, my lambic brew day um, with um, the step through of the turbid mash um, which is a key part of producing these beers so enjoy and I'll see you at the end so step one of the turbid mash with um, as you can see this is this is all the water that's going in for this bit so you can see it's quite uh, thick so there's not much um, spare liquor at all in this bit so we added uh, in here, there's 7.3 kg of Pilsner, 3 or 3.7 of raw wheat, and 400 grams of sour grapes. And we only added in eight and a half liters of um, about 60 degree water. Uh, water. So this is just basically getting everything damp, just starting to gelatinize some of those um, starches. Um, so this should even out at about. 50, 55 degrees around there um, and then in we'll leave this for 20 minutes and then in the 20 minutes time we will then add another um, 10 or so liters of um, 80 odd degree water to bring this up to 62 and then we're going to take some of the runnings off and um, start start to fill the kettle so this is step one Right, so, check it out. We are into part two. So we've just added um, <coughs> about 10 liters of um, 70 degree water, I think it ended up. The first, um, the first bit that we put in, unfortunately we had a few turn up and stuff, so it was a wee bit warm in the first instance. Um, so the first step was at about 55. Well, that's what the thermometer said in the bit I put it in. And maybe you should have took a few more around just because it was such a thick mesh. It probably had, did have a lot of you know, different temperatures in it. So what we've done is put that extra bit of water in. And now, as you can see, we've leveled out. It seems to be at 55 again. So, um, ah, I don't know what happened there, but hopefully we're trusting our numbers that the spreadsheet gave us and that we were at the right temperature the first time. So maybe it's just where I put the thermometer the first time it was 55, but it was 40 something elsewhere. So it's always going to be hard when you've got such a thick mash to get an even spread of temperature. But um, now this has got a lot more water in. I think that 55 is probably a lot closer to what it should be. So what we're going to do is leave this for five minutes and then we're going to do a bit of a bit of a wall off, get rid of a lot of the chunks and put the first um, two and a half litres into the kettle. We're actually going to put it into this. Um, our kettle is over here, but our kettle has a sparge water in. Because I'm going to have to play a bit of jiggery buggers. So the grain father over there has got the, other, the next two steps um, in so there's 27 liters over there and that sets a pretty much boiling point um, so when we come to do our next step in half an hour we'll add in um, 17 liters of that 
that will bring us up to another rest, take some more out, and then we add um, the rest of that sparge water in, and then all this water that I'll have then heated up will go back into the grain further so I can then sparge into the kit. I hope you got all that. <laughs> it's a bloody nightmare. Um, but it just means I could actually get things done um, until I get my hot water cylinder sorted out and all plumbed in properly. So, right, I'm going to crack on, watch a bit of cricket, and um, I'll see you for the next step. Right, so we've just taken our first two and a half litres out of the mash tun um, as our first rings, and check this out. How milky is that? Ah, oh, looks awesome. So we're going to put that in here. <coughs> then we're going to put the STC on it and bring it up to 85, just to denature all those enzymes, um, so that it stays that milky. Because um, they're all the starches and all the um, sort of proteins and shit that you want. That once the saccharomyces, you know, once the regular yeast is finished all the bread and the lacto and pedo, they're just going to slowly chew on all those lovely lovely starches and give them plenty of food so they can keep going over the next year or so. Alright. It's working. It's a good thing. <laughs> Excellent. Alright. I hope you can hear me. Um, so we're at step three. Oh, I've got a table. Smash that down. Um, and we've added in another 12 and a half litres of almost boiling water. So it will be raising this temperature up again. So we can get the next level of enzymatic conversion. So our main, our runoff at the moment is up to 89. Um, I'm just going to unplug this a minute. Um, so, I'm just going to test the temperature of this in here. Um, once I've set this part of the mash, I'm then going to take 10 litres of this off after doing a vol off. And, and that will give us some really nice runnings, um, you know, really starchy stuff. The first lot we took off, the 2.5 litres, was like milk. It was amazing stuff. So, just looking at this now, it seems to be levelling. Oh, it's coming down to about 67, 66, which is about bang on, just where we want it. So we've still got 50 more litres over there. Looks like we're going to have enough room, because I reckon once we've taken 10 litres out, there's enough room for 5 litres in here. Um, and then I'll get the, the big pot going, and we'll, we'll get cracking on at this point. So it seems to be working fine so far. The overnight... Yeah, I'll come a bit closer. Ooh, I can show you the beer I'm drinking. Close that off. The um, the overnight temperature is going to be four degrees, which is perfect. So in this bit that we're in, I'm literally just going to leave the door open uh, and just let whatever wants to come in come in. Uh, it is forecast to rain, but um, thankfully we've got this area that we can we can leave everything out. That's not too critical, you know. Even if someone wandered into here. What they're going to nick a bit of wood in the corner, <laughs> so and we live literally behind the wall where you're standing. So, um, looking good so far. Everything seems to be working out. It's a little bit scary because this is my first time doing this, and it all seemed a bit scary. But um, I'm glad the temperature dropped just that little bit, so we can capture at least some sort of local bugs. So then, when we come to do it next year properly as a brewery. Um, We'll have some bugs to play with already, so I'm um, looking forward to it. But um, this little hit, little beer here, um, this is a porter uh, that had crayfish added to it. Um, when we had the local Sea Fest festival here recently, um, we made a special special beer for it, and this was the one that um, this was it. So whoop, that wasn't an earthquake; it's just the wind moving the door. <laughs> right, I'm going to crack on. Um, Cheers. So apologies, um, it's going to be a, probably a long one, um, because you know, turbine mashing takes a wee while. Um, I also forgot, like when I took the first lot of water out of the grain fryer, I forgot to click it back onto the boil or you know, to keep it hot, so it dropped to like 75, so I've got to re 
reheat uh, that water to sparge the next part, well, to the next step in the turbid mash to bring this up to 72, 73 um, with another 12 odd litres of hot water. So it shouldn't take too long. It's already gone up three degrees and once it gets to about the 90, 95, um, we'll crack on with the next part. So uh, in the meantime, I guess I can say, you know, what's going on with Emporium? So the last week I was back in Christchurch, we brewed our newest beer called Citromatic. Um, which is an American pale ale, um, which is full of um, citra and amarillo, which is you know, two good hops, um, which I had left over from um, stock when I sold the homebrew shop. So, yeah, what are you going to do? Um, so yeah, use those up. Um, so hopefully that one goes well. Um, next month we're brewing Enigmatic again um, to restock that one. Um, although at the moment there's no um, Enigma hop, so we've got to change change the um, the dry hop on that one. So I'm, at the moment, I'm leaning towards wine here to give um, just a whole whole New Zealand um, route on that one. So um, and then we can call it New Zealand Pale Ale, and we're away and laughing. So um, after that, hopefully, I keep waiting on these things as I have to at the moment. Um, but hopefully, the main warehouse will have a CCA scene and um, so I can do use this kit and uh, once I've got it all set up a bit there and you do 50 litre batches and produce things that, that we can then put through you know the tap the rigor station here or at the end um, or just you know take back to Christchurch and give to a few different bars and stuff so yeah it's all going a wee bit slow at the moment and um, this bit that you're you can see behind me these eventually will be escape rooms um, but again we're waiting on other people to fucking do their jobs so we can get plans that uh, we can give to the council and they can okay and then I can start you know blocking this off into smaller rooms um, and then the lobby will be over there and this door that you're currently sitting in will probably get walled up and um, there's no reason to have a door um, and we'll, yeah, that will be the next sort of phase of, of this project. But um, at the moment, we're just yeah, waiting on things. If I had a bit more money, I guess we could just fly into it. Cause it just, we could get into the brewery side of things a bit more. But uh, realistic for me, I wanted these rooms, the escape room set up, the mini golf up and running, because they will produce you know, enough cash that we can then sort out the main brewery um, properly, rather than having to scrimp a bit on a few things out that way. But um, it looks like this water's getting up to temperature. So what are we at? Yeah, E3. So we go a little bit more time. Um, so yeah, once once that's up to temperature, um, we'll get cracking into this bit. Um, is that still on? Right. So yeah, all in all, everything's going all right. Drinking beer and making beer. Happy days. Alrighty, so just about fitted everything in. So I've just put the sensor in there, so oh yeah, we're hopefully gonna level out in the 70s at some point. The step was supposed to get to about 72, 73. So it's still dropping a wee bit, we're down to 74 and a half now. Um, but that looks all good. So we'll then see what temperature we've got the um, the main sparge water. There's another 30 litres of sparge water over in the big pot. So once, um, what we'll probably do is once that's up to temperature, chuck that on the bench, get it into the grain father so to keep it at temperature, and then use the grain father pump and the sparge arm and do like a continuous um, sparge back into the kettle and then chuck all this that we've kept into it all as well and we'll have a lovely big soupy mess by the end of it. No findings, no need to. We've got, oh that's what I've not shown yet. Right, so there you go. We've got grandfather with 30 litres of almost 90 degree water in it. We've got a mash tun that's full to the brim 
and we've got a kit. So I'm going to do a quick wall off to set the green bed in the mash tun. So we circle it from here and we're backing in. Um, drain out a little bit of this so this drops. Then I'm going to get some tin foil to sit on top of the green bed. So this will land on top of that, which will spread it out nicely, run it all into here. And I'm going to, all this that's been sat at 85 degrees, I'm just going to pour straight into here. And then, yeah, I might find a piece of silicon just to um, stop splashing. And we'll splash this bugger and get as much as we need pre boil So we've got a three hour boil coming up. And, and we're going to add in some Nelson Savin um, that I've had sat in just a brown paper bag for ooh, the last two years, I think it is. So, ooh. In here, 2015 Nelson, Nelson Sullivan. Uh, you think I'd be better prepared after all these years of doing this. Uh, but, as you can see, hopefully, he's a proper old sort of scungy hops. Oop, losing a few on the floor. So they've just been sat at ambient room temperature for the last two years. So they're down to about three alpha acids, three or four alpha acids, what I can make out. So we'll put a few handfuls of those in to start, um, inhibit the lactobacillus and also protect the beer because it's got preserv preservative qualities. Um, and yeah, that's what everyone does apparently. So we'll crack on. All right, I need both hands, so I'll best leave you and I'll hopefully come back to you during the boil. Well, yeah, so I'll just give you a quick rundown on what we're doing. So <clears throat> we've got grain father at about 90 degrees um, coming in there yeah, into the so I guess the dispersion plate that's then coming through the mesh and then it's coming down and into the kettle. So I'm not entirely sure what gravity we've got. Yeah I haven't actually taken anything but um, we're aiming for a pre-boil of about, I think it's 10.30, 10.30 something. Because we're going to boil for three hours. That's going to condense it down by about 30, 35% if I have a proper boil. Um, so we're ending up 50, hopefully we'll end up with 50 into the uh, the fermenter here, then into the keg. Um, so, yeah, now what we've got to do is just get it up to temperature and boil the shit out of it for three hours um, and then leave it out overnight and let the magic happen so it's an even cooler thing tonight there's all oh, I can't remember what it was called but there's a there's a meteor shower thing that apparently is happening up in the heavens um, tonight but unfortunately it's cloudy so we're not going to see bugger all of it but um, we can't even see the mountains that are over that way but we know it's up there, so and it was a cool name, so I think it may even end up being the name of the beer. But well, the first blend of this beer whenever we get around to it. All right, so we're slowly coming up to boil. We're almost there. Look, we're at about ninety odd, nineteen ninety five. Um, and check it out. This is the hops, as you can see. They're um, very old. Um, but funnily enough, all this that's here um, is just 63, 66 grams worth. So they are well aged because they are super light. Right, so all I've got to do now is make sure this doesn't boil over when it starts. So I have my boil over kit, spray bottle and spoon. Um, and then I'm just going to move the door. <laughs> away from this just so there's nothing that can catch fire uh, and then boil this for three hours with the hops and let yeah flame out hopefully I don't know what time is now time's about seven o'clock so hopefully flame out about half ten and then yeah tomorrow morning we'll come grab it and chuck it into the fermenter and if there's anything left I guess we'll um, put that into some smaller fermenters and um, 
maybe pitch some extra dregs into those ones, but I want to leave the main one, the 50 litre one, as just whatever Kaikora has to offer this night. And it is pretty cold at the moment. Um, you almost see your breath, so it's pretty good. I like that. It's good. Right then. After a bit of a false start, I had to go and get more gas. Um, but it's now three hours since we started the boil. As you can see, we started. You can see that the boil line started here, so we oh, boiled off probably about 20, 15, 20 litres ish. Um, and now all we do is turn everything off. So I guess flame out. Turn the lights off um, and leave it. In the morning, we'll come along and um, put it into the fermenter. So, um, good night, we'll see you in the morning. Well, good morning, everyone, and what a morning! Check that out. Some beautiful views on the mountains this morning. Try and zoom in for you so you can see. Look, I had a bit of rain the other day. Some lovely snow capped mountains looking down on us. So it's half seven, and just thought I'd come in and transfer this bad boy into the keg. So there it is. Still feels pretty warm actually. Um, I'll get a thermometer in it at some point, um, but yeah, I'll get cracking on with doing this. Now I'll do a wrap up at the end. Um, it's a quick chat, and then see how much of this we actually got. But yeah, looks like it's worked. It's good stuff. All right, so that was ooh, that was Friday, and now it's Tuesday, and coming this morning. And if you wait for it, way. We seem to have fermentation. Fantastic, so I think it's taken, which is good. So, um, I'm a happy boy. The, um, the day after I did this, it actually got down even lower overnight. I didn't realize that was gonna happen, but um, but I couldn't have done this on the Saturday. We were way, way too busy. So yeah, happy times. So I think hopefully we'll have some bugs to inoculate um, other things with so what I may do um, is yeah hopefully get a barrel at some point uh, and knock up four recipes of the same thing but instead of doing the overnight thing just add the the inoculation batch essentially this is potentially going to be so um, happy days good right um, this is it for now sorry it's been a long one um, but obviously because you with so much mashing and um, obviously all those bits and bobs doing and um, it takes a wee while to, to go through it all but um, if you have any questions ask below if not um, I'll see you next Wednesday thank you cheers